people often ask us how you make passive solar design work if you can't get good solar access from the north. And this is a classic case in point. We have a lovely site in uh, inner urban Sydney, but to the north we have a neighbouring building, two storey in places, and uh, lots of shading. Very difficult to get good solar access into most of the property. So what we've done here is created a courtyard. Uh, this is approaching completion, so uh, this is a work in progress. And the courtyard has terrific north aspect. Look at that, wonderful. But the living areas and the bedroom areas are not so good. So we have to um, pull a few tricks, pull a rabbit out of the hat, as it were. The first thing to do is to maximise the amount of pure passive solar access that you can get. Uh, and in this case, using the recess of the courtyard to pull these big sliding doors away from the northern shading, we're able to do that. And the winter sun will go in about as far as that extension lead lying on the floor there. So it certainly works very well for a few short hours of the day here uh, while the sun's pretty much in the noon position. But of course that's not enough to warm the whole house. We still have to do other things. One of the common tricks that we pull out of the hat is hydronic heating. So we have solar panels up on the roof. They kind of borrow the solar access in a sense. They heat water, that gets pumped down into this large storage tank. In this case it's uh, the system's designed and installed by Rotex. And that pipe work then distributes the hot water through pipes uh, installed in the floor in the actual concrete slab and that kind of pink pipe there is what then goes through the floors of the house to give you a really lovely low grade radiant heat that is just a, a perfect temperature. You can set it with a thermostat and it's very very low energy to run. It's just a circulation pump and, uh, and that also couples up with the domestic hot water. So we get one system to do both and that gives us some economies of scale to offset the costs. This installation is a work in progress. You can see the plumber's uh, only just finished for the day. And you can see the insulation on the pipework and that's really important. That elbow joint is typical of, of what he'll do to all the joints. And when he's finished, all of these pipes will be absolutely covered in foam and foil insulation that reduces heat loss. And that's really important for the efficacy of the system. One of the really nice things, of course, is to combine the technicalities of passive solar design and sustainability generally with style and livability and make the buildings exciting and, and interesting to live in. And one way of doing that here, of course, is to get the inside and the outside into a really interesting relationship where we open these big doors back and the line becomes blurred. I know it's been said many, many times, but it's a really nice thing to do where in this climate... I mean, Sydney is such a lovely place to live, apart from the traffic, of course, but the climate is wonderful. And inside, outside, why do we need hard delineation? We really don't. And so we can get passive solar to work hand-in-hand hand and really complement a dynamic and interesting living environment.